Um, South Australian Voice, the Libs have come out now and it appears, James, that they are going to say they will repeal this thing if they get back into power in South Australia. Is that correct? Well, yeah, that does seem to be what they are saying and good on them. I mean, this is the sort of leadership that we need from Liberal oppositions around the country. You know, people who've been watching this show for the last few weeks know that we've had an awful lot of focus on South Australia, this voice, the repeal legislation. Um, but it all comes, of course, back to this huge bullet that we dodged nationally last yes. year <laughs> when the people voted overwhelmingly to say, we do not want this sort of thing. South Australia still saddled themselves with it. And what happens? Well, of course, it's become this body where very few people have voted for it. There's all these little sinecures attached to it. Um, and all of these groups of, of people who some got there with no votes at all are going to have the right to make oh, well, these special yes. representations to Parliament. Some yeah. got there with a total of six votes. Some got so there basically, if you got your immediate family to vote for you, you're, you're in. Uh, <coughs> but I think this is also important to note that both with South Australia and their voice and Victoria's got something called the First People's Assembly where they've had a couple of elections, mm. the turnout has been abysmal, yeah. under 10%. So that tells you the Indigenous people themselves, the ones who are eligible to participate in this process and eligible to vote, aren't interested because they're not voting. They're far more likely to vote in state, federal, council elections than they are for these bodies that are dedicated, which tells you it is the activist is class the activist, who absolutely. wants this. Yep. This isn't something we were lied to <clears throat> throughout the referendum debate about this is led by the Indigenous community, all Indigenous people want this, or the overwhelming majority of them do. Well, no, because when they actually have them at a state level, they don't want to participate in it. And you're right to point out, Rita, that it is the Indigenous Australians living, working, classic Great Australian lives who are completely disinterested in this stuff. They know that big government delivers nothing. They know it's all ideology, left-wing ideology. One of those who was a strong supporter of The Voice, in fact, she claimed to be untethered when she heard the results <laughs> of The Voice. <laughs> Untethered. Oh. I think that's another word for unhinged, perhaps. There are many synonyms for untethered. Disconnected <laughs> from reality would be another one. Uh, they've picked her as our new Governor General. Oh, I'll be talking dear. about this appropriately in Clown Show later on in the show today. But Sam Mostyn was the uh, was Albanese's pick for the new oh. Governor General, James. Your well, thoughts? My thoughts? Well, I mean, Ooh. I've got a few thoughts. I know you'll be covering this a bit later on in the program, Rob, but let me just say that I think that it is absolutely remarkable that we now essentially have the Governor General for Human Resources exactly. here uh, <laughs> in, in, in this very high office of the land. It's really remarkable to me a couple of things, though. They've broken the mould of Governor Generals and now said that essentially this path of going through corporate boardrooms and being involved with diversity efforts and yep. lobbying for political things and being a labor staffer, this well-worn path, and we all know tons of people in places like Sydney and Melbourne who've done this, you know, this is now not being a general, not a life of public service, this is the way to the highest office of the land, which we honor, and I'll say one last thing, we are heading potentially towards a hung parliament at the next election. The advice of the governor general will be crucial. It is absolutely crucial that that office be held by someone who is seen to be above the political fray. And I'm <laughs> afraid that that is not <laughs> Sam Boston.